Greetings everybody and welcome back to the channel. I thought it might be pretty cool if I did a commentary video on the Elizabeth City Timeline video I posted a little while back. But before we get into it, if you would like to support me and the work I'm doing on this channel, then please hit the subscribe button, leave a comment and hit the like button. All right, let's do it. So I've got it all set up, um, working live here. I haven't uh, scripted anything, so we'll just uh, get into it and see how we go. So we start with the title card, which is important to let people know what they're about to be watching, of course. And then we open up on this pretty cool image of Premier Playford giving his inaugural speech on Inauguration Day, 16th of November 1955. And this is actually true. Playford was actually under quite a bit of pressure to name Elizabeth after himself, to name, to, to name Playford, not Elizabeth. He uh, resisted that and chose to name it after Her Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II. And so I wonder what he would think of uh, current events of today. Next we have uh, footage, very cool footage of Elizabeth South and the first residents moving into the area. And the thing that really strikes me about this footage is uh, how young many of these people are, which, you know, many of them were immigrants from England and Europe, which meant they were small children during World War II. They would have memories of, you know, air raids and bomb shelters and being taken away from their families to live in the countryside with people they'd never met before to try and keep them safe. Post-World War II, you got devastated economies and ravaged cities, so um, hats off to them. It takes uh, a lot of courage to leave everything you know on the hope of something better in the future, which is what many of them were coming here for. They were dreaming of a better future and hoping to leave behind some uh, pretty traumatic childhood memories. We just had Elizabeth Hotel Elizabeth, which was the first building erected in the town centre, 1957, a good three years before there even was a town centre as, as far as the shopping centre. And look at all this paddock, this dirt and... Wow. Imagine those first people that rocked up wondering what on earth they had let themselves in for. <laughs> then we had the skeleton of the town centre taking shape. And uh, if you look closely at the picture, you'll see some workmen doing their thing. All, of course, had lives of their own and families and dreams of their own. I wonder what they thought as they were building this shopping centre in the middle of the paddock. Elizabeth Oval, home of uh, Central District Football Club. Go you doggies! And of course the beloved Elizabeth Roller Skating Rink, which opened in 1959 and I believe closed in 1986. Uh, much beloved Elizabeth Youth Institution of its day. Um, probably as much loved as the Shandon Drive-In, for many of you would remember the Shandon Drive-In which is where I saw Star Wars way back in 1978 in the back of the family station wagon. Elizabeth Courthouse, some of you may be familiar. <laughs> I can honestly say I never stepped foot inside the Elizabeth Courthouse, but uh, more to do with just having never been caught doing anything I shouldn't have at the time. Some nice uh, shots there of the town centre taking shape, Elizabeth South Water Tower, all that dirt, my goodness. This is a great shot, Hotel Elizabeth, you can really get a sense of how in the middle of nowhere this thing really must have seemed to be when it was first built, and our beloved originals. Most of those people will be dead now. Alrighty. Sorry, that wasn't very cheery. <laughs> uh, view of the Cambridge Flats. And this is pretty cool. What I tried to do with this bit is I was really trying to create as much of a kind of three-dimensional experience of the landscape to give everyone an idea um, of exactly where everything sat in relation to everything else as it is a, a long, long time ago. And Elizabeth, as you know, looks nothing like this anymore and most of the most of the buildings and the community services 
that are featured in this video just don't exist anymore. Bit of footage from that classic cinemata, cinematic masterpiece, A Place to Grow, which I'll do a commentary on soon as well. I love this shot. Beth Breeze Swimming Pool. Some people wouldn't uh, be aware that Aquadome, before it was the Aquadome, was called the Elizabeth Swimming Pool, and before that, originally it was called the Beth Breeze Swimming Pool, which was a hybrid of the um, names Elizabeth and Salisbury, because at the time, originally, Elizabeth and Salisbury came under the same council. It wasn't until 1964 that they split off. <coughs> Excuse me. And here we have more footage from A Place to Grow. Which, as in A Place to Grow, they never feature anything to do with Windsor Green or the Octagon. I'm assuming A Place to Grow must have been made around 1961-62, around about this time here. And this is the first aerial shot we have where we really start to see the town centre taking shape very quickly too i might add it's pretty impressive how how quickly everything got built up the original open air mall and one of the reasons why i emphasized pictures of the open air mall so much was to later on when i referenced the original mall give people a a good sense of because the original open air mall was pretty much the entire town center shopping center that's all there was and then later you see the picture where i highlight the original mall and then you see just how much has been built up around it in such a short space of time uh, the construction of winterslow bridge which of course connected the town center to the western suburbs where i'm from i grew up in smithfield plains and uh, connecting the town center to the western industrial area So um, one of the striking things about Playford and the South Australian Housing Trust in the early years is just how present they are in the community and, and how much effort they're really trying to make to make everything work. As flawed as some uh, aspects of their plans definitely were, their sincerity of effort is pretty evident to me. And I'm a great believer in, you know, we all have our own stories to tell and we all have our own experience of Elizabeth. We all have our own version of Elizabeth. And some of it, for some of us, it was a positive. Some of us, it was a negative. Some it was somewhere in between. Look at all these beautiful people who sent in their photos. Thank you, guys. Beautiful. Um, whatever your story is, I think they're all valid. And nothing I do on this channel is to negate anyone's experience who may have been negative. For example, Jimmy, <laughs> who uh, in his autobiography, uh, I'm not sure if he mentions it in the book, I'm pretty sure he mentions it in the actual film, he kind of suggests that everyone was lured into the town and then just left to their own devices, basically abandoned, and that's really not true. Um, in those early days, you can see just how present and committed Playford and the South Australian Housing Trust really were. They really made a, a massive effort to make this, which in many ways was an experiment called Elizabeth work for everybody. Um, yeah, so there's that. And there's this little bit of footage from the film Beginners Please, which was a promotional video promoting the opening of the Elizabeth Civic Theatres, which are today the Playford Civic Theatres. Good old Johnny's. Johnny's in construction. and fade into 1964, the year Elizabeth won its independence as a city in its own right, separating from Salisbury. We're kind of cousins really, aren't we? Elizabeth and Salisbury. Uh, Elizabeth Oval, which today I believe is called Ex Convenience Oval. Doesn't that just roll off the tongue? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Kind of bewildering how many 
renamings there are as if Elizabeth is something we should feel ashamed of or embarrassed about and you should never feel ashamed of where you come from and there is a lot to feel proud about we really are made of tough stuff like I said that footage of those young people um, those young men and women leaving Europe and um, starting all over again and embarking on you know an uncertain future it takes an enormous amount of courage to do something like that Here's Playford uh, making a speech at the opening of John Martin's. And then there is this guy. I love this guy. Look at him. He, uh, he knows he's in trouble. And uh, he's probably right now questioning a lot of his life choices. <laughs> <laughs> opening day of John Martin's, which was clearly a big deal in the town on the day. Clearing the way for Elizabeth City Council Chambers, which uh, would be housed within the Windsor Building. Uh, which is still standing today one of the few items in this video that is still standing today 64 draws to a close uh, this is premier playford toasting the city of elizabeth on its ninth birthday in 1964 and the first year of its city status and then, of course, that was uh, Jeff Shedley in the middle there, pointing out his plans for the Elizabeth Civic Theatres. The Shedley still stands today, of course. The Octagon, sadly, no more. There's some pretty cool footage here, which I, I wish the quality was better, but there's probably some pristine copy stored away somewhere. Hidden from view, then to the right there we have the octagon still under construction, and then so this is from that time. This is a pretty cool photo. Most of the photos on this YouTube channel I find through the Playford's Past Recollect website, by the way, if you're wondering, and want a pretty cool resource for vintage Elizabeth photos. Here we go. So there's the original mall, which was all there was in the beginning, and then you got all this um, built up already by 1965 so five years really since the first since the mall opened uh, the elizabeth civic theaters are all complete and opened mid 60s wonder how much those cars will be worth today those dancing figures have um, were in storage for a while and now are located just outside the library across the road um, where Playford Civic, where the Playford Civic Centre is today. The old billiard hall. If any of you have any photos of inside the billiard hall, please send them to me. It's uh, rare as hen's teeth. I haven't, I've never been able to find any actual photos or footage of the actual billiard hall, yet we all have memories of the billiard hall, but there's no evidence that it actually ever existed. So I'm starting to think we all just had a collective hallucination or something. Because <laughs> I can't find anything anywhere. Okay, so council chambers built, the Windsor building built, and now we're clearing the way for the library and the clock tower, the final pieces of the original Elizabeth City Town Centre. And I love that photo. God bless whoever took these photos. Very cool. Very cool. I remember that little brick platform being there. Walking on it as a little kid. And uh, there we are, clock tower almost complete. 69, the library opens, which again is across the road now at the Playford Civic Center. And, uh, and then I think on the 22nd of May, 1970, the chimes ring out from the clock tower for the very first time. Do I remember that correctly? Was it the 22nd? Let's have a look. Yes, 22nd of May, 1970, which um, it's quite bittersweet really for me. So the 22nd of May is like, um, you know, it's a, a great moment. The, chimes ring out for the first time and at the same time it's kind of like signaling the beginning of the end because never again do we see such rapid growth um, and creativity in the development of Elizabeth if anything things start to become a little more reductive after this and one by one we lose many of the um, many of the features 
that are um, in this video, we just start to lose them, they get demolished or run down or whatever. So the Octagon's gone, Windsor Green's gone, it's a car park of all things. So there's the uh, Elizabeth train station way back in 1961, around that time, 61, 62. And uh, yeah, so I hope you like this video. And um, the old double decker buses, which were gone before my time, I think I don't remember there ever being double decker buses, but clearly there were. And many of you remember them. And I think this is Elizabeth Grove, I think. And then back to Hotel Elizabeth, back to the original building erected in the original town center. As always, I trust this video finds you well and happy and doing something in your day that you like to do. Um, yeah, see you next time. Namaste.